Hi, I'm Marcus Bronzy from How To Kill An Hour and in today's video, we're going to be upgrading the How To Kill An Hour studios. So come on, let me show you around. So this is the How To Kill An Hour studios. This is where we create our award-winning podcast content. This is where we make our great unboxing videos. This is where we create loads of content. You can stream in here, you can film in here, you can record audio in here. And it's a modular studio. And by that, I mean everything can move around. So for example, tables can move around. We can have them anywhere we want. The desk can move around. This is the podcast desk, even our microphone. So this is set up with a podcast configuration. They can be easily picked up and moved around. So whatever content you want to create, we can do that in here and we can move stuff around to our need. Uh, so that's what the studio is like at the moment. Now I'm going to talk you through how we're going to improve it. Right, so the first obvious thing that we're going to change in the studio is this blue background, which if I'm honest, on video looks really good. I like it, but I don't know if you can see it's kind of a little bit faded now. You can see some of the framing behind it. I think this was put up <laughs> late 80s, early 90s maybe. So this will see things. I think you've seen enough. So what we're going to do is this is all going to come off. Look, you can see I've, I've loosened the panel here actually when I was looking at it. This, these panels are all going to come out, right? And they've got wood behind them. We've got a small bit of soundproofing behind them. That's also going to come out because it's not really doing the job. We're going to have it replaced with some wool for some soundproofing. And then we're going to have a new tracking system with the wool stretched over it. And hopefully with a new tracking system, we're going to have slightly smaller number of lines or breaks within this wall. And if we can get it right, we'll just have one whole solid wall. And we're going to go with the classic color, black. Same goes for the ceiling as well. Uh, as you can see, it's the same color. It's the same setup. Again, there's a little bit of soundproofing behind it. That's all coming out and we're going again with it. In fact, if you come with me real quick, if you look over here, we've actually got what is behind one of these frames. It's like a wood frame, a little bit of wood behind it. And then it's, I can rip a bit out now. There's a little bit of soundproofing behind that as well. All coming out, this is. Um, another thing we're going to adjust is the lighting here. So we're going to be taking this out and we're going to be putting in a smarter light fitting, which has more lights on it. So we can have more or less lighting, color adjustable lights. And also we're going to be having a beam of light down here, but I'll tell you more about that product in just a moment. Again, with the ceiling, we're going to be adding in more of these tracks and the tracks, the best way of me describing them, they're going to be similar to these tracks. So these are the old lighting tracks, which are a bit old, excuse me for fiddling around with them. But these are old lighting tracks where you can move these lights, right? Oh, <laughs> but this is the old way of us moving the lights, which is great but we can only put the lights on this rack at the moment. What we're going to be doing is putting in new tracks where we can put lights on, we can put cameras on them, may even be able to put microphones on them. So yeah, when we're done, we'll have a number of tracks and we'll be able to hang different things to them. What that's, that, that means is, is for us, like, it's going to mean we have a lot more floor space because all of our lighting in here is great. We have loads of lighting in here, but that's a lot of stuff to get over. It's not really safe. There's more than one person. So by having these lights up here, on the ceiling, we're going to be having a lot more floor space. It's going to be safer. And also because it's newer lighting, it's going to be better for the environment as well, because everything's going to be LED. Um, another thing we're going to change, we're just going to refresh these. These are obviously our power points. We're just going to add something that isn't white, something that blends in with our classic black background a little bit better. We're going to go for a brush steel. Yeah, maybe something with a bit of bronze in it and some USB ports, hopefully as well, because it's 2021. While we're at it, this is an example of one of our other bit old bits of lighting. I'll turn it on for a sec, try not to blind you. There you go. It's great, but as you can see, it was relatively low profile when we got it compared to other lighting, but it takes up quite a bit of space. And these, these are the old bulbs that we use, which, you know, they're, they're fine. They do run quite hot and I believe that LEDs are going to run cooler and be a little bit more energy efficient and also take up less space. These are also on stands as well. So we'll get these hanging. Well, not these, we'll get the lights that we have up hanging so that there's more space to move around. The only thing not on wheels in the studio are these KRK VXTs. It's 
Shout out to my producers that know that these are bad boy speakers. Uh, Timbaland used to use very similar speakers to make beats. Uh, very cool. They may go, they may stay, but they aren't on wheels at the moment. Um, but we'll find somewhere to put them. The TV is on wheels and what that does is that actually means it is a little bit further out from the wall because the stand it's on isn't flush against the wall. We may mount this or we may mount a different television that's not as old. But we may, we may not. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. This final I saw is all my fault. Our air conditioning broke because that happens and I ordered a replacement but I ordered the wrong size. It was a hot day and I was like, let's just put it in. So massive thank you to the guys from ECS for installing this. They did a really good job. This aircon works perfectly. However, there's this massive space where the old aircon used to be and that needs to go. So with the new install of the walls, we're gonna have it all flush right up against it so that it looks better. So hopefully what we'll have when we finish this refurb is more studio space to operate in whilst maintaining all of the options that we had in the past where we could do stuff like auto cue, we could do podcasts, we could have guests in here, we could shoot multi-cam video shoots. We're gonna keep all of that, but we're just gonna make it a lot slicker looking and a lot easier to run and safer and use less energy as well. So I've told you what we're gonna do. Let me show you a few of the toys that we're gonna be using to make this happen. Another thing we've had to think about is how we're gonna fit the lights to the ceiling. Now what we'll be using and it's actually getting spray painted now, which is why I can't show you it, because we're spray painting this black. This is called Unistrut. We're having it spray painted black to match the color, classic color of the studio, putting it on the ceiling, and then we'll be using a few things to connect our lights to it. One technique that we're going to try is using this boom pole. And there's two ways that we're gonna try and connect it to the ceiling. One is by using this, which is called an orbital fastener. I'll just hold that closer to you at the moment. Now I want you to imagine the uni struts hanging off the ceiling with two hooks like that. This is going to drop into those hooks and the spring is gonna give it pressure to hold it in place. This is then going to connect this stick, boom pole for those in the game, gonna connect to it. And then our light is gonna to connect to the other end or our mic or whatever is gonna to connect to the other end. We can also extend it if we need to. And then what happens is once it's up against the uni strut, if we want to move it, we just have to put some pressure on it, move it along, and let it drop down. And if it does start to wear down or break or these springs start to mess up, super cheap, super easy to replace. Whoops, that doesn't work. Or if we can, we also have this which has been 3D printed, which is, I'm, I'm gonna call it the cart. And this also works in the same way with Unistrut, but it actually has wheels instead. So the wheels are gonna be like that. The hole is there, it will connect in the same way. And then it will go across the ceiling like so. so there's two ways that we're gonna try and connect these to the ceiling. So one of the first bits of technology we're gonna have is the Philips Hue Bridge. The bridge is vital when it comes to setting up these lights. And there are ways that you can access and use some of the Hue features with Bluetooth, with some of their newer products. To get the maximum amount of features out of these products, you really need a Hue bridge. Now the Hue bridge works as the brains behind the operation. It connects in to your router and it transmits information to adjust all of your colors. It's from there you can use a Hue app to set up zones. You can set up different lighting patterns and it's how we're going to be controlling the lights here. To add our extra bit of ambiance to the room, we're going to have strip lights running all the way across the ceiling, pushing light downwards. So you'll have this nice wash of light coming from up top down below. And to do that, we're going to be using a number of these LED strip lights from Hue. This is a two meter version, but you can get one meter extensions. And we'll just get into it and I'll show you it real quick. That's the little connector that connects into a power unit there. I'll show you, I'll get you that out. Let's get all the bits out, why not? This is the power unit so that plugs into the wall. You have different connectors. We're in the UK, so let's connect that. That pops in there. One side pops in there. 
the other side pops in there and then that plugs into plugs into your LED lights which are in a little loop here but let's fold out a bit so I can show you them so these are the lights this is the light strip here I'll hold it a bit closer so you can see the strip that's the strip there so that's a bit closer you can see the different LED components in there that's how we're going to be lighting the top up this is the Philips play light bar and what this will be used for is we'll, this will be one of the lights that we moved around the studio a little bit we can use it to create some good ambient lighting kind of like the backlighting that we've got here but unlike that we'll be able to adjust the color without having to swap out gels because at the moment we've got a bit of gel take that out that's clear that's purple we'll be able to do all of that without having to uh, mess with this light. We can just place it and use it. And these are actual, they, have, they are powered by a lead, but we can actually move them around. But I'll get in the box. I'll show you what they look like real quick as well. Literally what they look like, literally just a bar of light, but they do kick out some lovely light and they're really nice and directional. So we'll be having the option with these to have Obviously, like I said, with the LED strip around the ceiling to have light washing down and we can also have light wash up and we can actually move these around as well. And they're nice and low profile. They're out of the way. They're not something that's going to be clunky. They're smaller in terms of profile than any other light we have in here. Next up, we've got the MIG. The MIG-un. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this will even all fit in, in camera. This is the ceiling spotlight Centris. And... Oh, I don't... So this is a proper bit of lighting that needs to be installed by a qualified electrician, but long story short, I don't know if we can see both of these. Can we see this all? It's got two spotlights at each side, which you can adjust the color of, and then one nice beam along the center as well, which you can adjust the color of as well. So it's gonna give us loads of flexibility when it comes to lighting subjects or products in the room. I'm not going to unbox it any more than this because this needs to be installed by a proper electrician. So I'm not going to fiddle around with this, but I'll put this back in the box. That's the Hue Centris. Next, we have this bit of tech, which is quite special. This is the Hue HDMI sync box. Now this does a few things, which is pretty cool. For starters, it's a HDMI hub. You can plug in four HDMI devices and then one single HDMI goes out to your television. It's great because it's low latency, so it shouldn't affect your gaming too much. I understand if you're a pro gamer, you don't want any latency, um, but if you're watching TV and you wanna do some casual gaming and have, for example, Xbox, PS, uh, computer, extra, extra devices like that, maybe even a special kind of streaming box or something like that, all of those four things can plug in and you can have output of that content to your television. Another thing this Hue HDMI sync box does is, is once you connect it up to the app, your lights can move or change color, should I say, in time to music. And also it can analyze the pixels, the actual information, the color information coming in through one of these HDMI sources and output that to your lights as well as your television program. So you can be watching a show with explosions in it or big bright colors and your lights, the lights you choose in your household will actually react to those. It works really, really well if you have like an LED strip behind your TV or a couple of play bars next to your television. And I love the fact that it just smartens up your cables as well. That's one heat HDMI lead going into your TV instead of, you know, three or four, which some people have to do. Neat and tidy. Ah, it also automatically switches between devices as well when you power them up and power them down. Good one, that. Next up is the Elgato Key Light. Now, this is more with streaming in mind. Um, I just, this is more with regards to streaming. I mean, everything else we've used, we can use for streaming, but this is something that we're gonna use to improve the situation that we have with our house lighting i think i showed you the big ass lights that we had before these are hopefully going to give us lots of light and also not take up lots of space at the same time let's have a quick look i want to show you how much smaller they are than the other light heads that we had i mean look the box is already smaller than the rest of the kit so these key lights look at, i mean look at the size of that it's like a large dinner plate 
or a big serving plate. That, compared to the big lights that we had before, is a big difference in size. I think there'll be a slightly different color to our lights that we had before in terms of the what they output, but I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with those. And, comes with a clamp if you need as well for you to connect to your light, but I'm gonna be hooking these up to the ceiling. Next up, we have the Stream Deck XL. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Stream Decks, this is the XL version. <laughs> and for those of you that aren't, a Stream Deck is a very simple way of controlling the setup of your stream. So when we're using this room in its streaming configuration, uh, we will like to make it very easy for us to control what you see. Now the Stream Deck is a clever programmable set of buttons, which when it's like this, I guess, doesn't look that exciting, but it is exciting because there are these little screens behind each of these buttons, which you can program to do different things. So, you know, it could be for the, for the lights, lights on, lights off, change the scene during your stream or other things as well. Apparently these can be programmed in certain other ways too. Now, maybe this isn't the video for answering the question, but it would be good to know if we could sync everything up in the studio to fire off from one app or one stream deck, then that would be a really good thing. So whilst we're getting the refund, that's just a stand for it, don't worry. Don't pick it up like how I did it. <laughs> Whilst we're getting the refurb done, I'll be looking into how that all works. No promises, but we will see. So that's all of the kit that we're gonna be installing in here that I can show you now. I guess now it's time to make the refurb happen. Come in. <laughs> this is the new studio, the back cave. It's just black. But um, yeah, this is the new setup. And I guess it's time for me to talk you through everything that we've done. But first we need some lighting in here. So we've got the Philips Hue lighting setup in here and I'll talk you through each of the lights that we've got. I guess the main thing is this big light that we have here. Here I can turn each of the lights on and off. You know, I can turn everything off. I can turn it on and go through the different types of settings, make them brighter. I can even go into specific lights and turn lights off. So I can turn, I'll turn the left, this is just called left strip. So I can turn the left strip off over there. Or I can turn, you know, the right strip off over there. And the reason you want that kind of control in this studio is not just to show off with the colors, but basically when we're shooting different things, like if we're shooting products, you want to have really finite control over the, um, stuff that we're shooting and lights are really important thing. So even Nathan, the cameraman knows, you know, the fact that you can adjust the lighting to make something brighter or darker, or maybe have a hint of blue or purple or green, that really works. Also, if we were shooting some brand work in here, we could adjust the colors so that are the same color as a brand. Do you know what I mean? If we're working with PlayStation, we want PlayStation blue. Or if we're working for How To Kill An Hour, the podcast, we want How To Kill An Hour yellow. Which leads me on to another cool thing. We've got the sync box, which I remember showing you, which is a small box. We've got it fired up over there. And there's another app that actually works here. So it's called the Hue Sync app. And what that does is, is it actually connects to four HD devices uh, and, and that's four HDMI inputs can go into it, 4K ones as well. And then one HDMI comes out and goes into your TV. And what it does is it picks up all of the color information and shares that information with your Hue lighting. So once you set that up and you turn it on, for starters, you'll be able to use it as a hub, which is great. But as you can see here, I've actually set this and put on a, like a YouTube playlist where you've got some washes of lights. And then if I have the right settings on and press start, it will start to adjust the lights in the room to follow the colors on the screen there. So it's really cool. I mean, you can see it, you know, you can really see it on the aircon actually, the gradients of lighting. And if I adjust that and set it so it's just the TV, you can really see it just working on the TV. Yeah. Or, you know, we can set it to other lights. I don't know, I'll set it to a few of the other lights in here as well. So you can get the ceiling lights in on it too. Or should we do this one? One second, is it entertainment? 
Yeah, there we go. So that's all of them firing off. And you can see the centrist lights. You can see the colors in there as well. The, the big main LED in it, as well as the spotlights as well. And again, this is cool. What would you use it for? I think it would make a nice effect if you're streaming so that the person that's playing the game, you can have the hue of the game color in them. Um, and also you can set it to music as well, which is pretty cool. If you're having a little disco and you've got your Philip Blacks and you want to have a little skank or whatever, they actually bounce to the music too, which is pretty cool. And we'll do that in a bit. Um, so that's the Philips lights. Uh, and we've set that up in a way now, if I'm honest, I can fiddle around with all this stuff and have loads of fun. And that's great when I'm messing around. But when I want to get to work, I think the most convenient thing for me accessory wise is just knowing that I have this Hue remote where I can press the button a couple of times and be like, right, this is, in fact, this is genuinely the lighting setup that we have for when we're shooting stuff to unbox. These lights are great. They're fine, but when we're shooting, it's great to have ambient lighting, but we also needed a solution to give us really strong, bright lights that really push and punch and give us that kind of studio lighting setup. And before we use massive softbox lights, which were really cool, but they took up loads of space and they were a trip hazard. And the way we got around them is by having these Elgato key lights hooked up to the stream deck so that at the push of a button, they're on and we have studio lighting washing over our subjects. How do we hang the lights? Well, so we've actually got three strips. This is the middle one here, three strips here hanging up on our ceiling on the on on, on the um, starlight ceiling and then we've actually got three strips going the other direction and we've got trolleys in between them so i'll show you on this here oh, sorry it doesn't matter actually you can actually move the trolleys here and move anything that we hang on the trolleys here so a great example of that is for our unboxings we want a camera to be facing us top down we've got this camera here and we can actually have the camera move in and out can have it moved down and then with these adjustable units as well we can actually take these all the way out or if we want to we can actually twist adjust have them shorter or longer as well and then have everything set up there and to be fair that's super convenient because before to get a camera hanging over us we had to build an a-frame put it up again that and the other lighting is like a trip hazard so now it's a lot safer we can move around and if we need to get this out of the way so we can do other stuff we can crack on that's cool. Yeah, so we've got this, this is all now, I think you remember before this is all separate panels, but now it's all one single piece. We stuffed a little bit of fireproof wall behind it as well to make sure that it's a little bit more dead. Sounds a lot more dead in here. Um, and then there's also a couple of fascias that we just slapped on here, which just match with the black of the room really. And just gives us loads Black's a nice colour, it's a nice neutral colour, it looks great. If I'm standing in front of the camera, you lose the background behind me. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. It's a really smooth background. The blue was cool before, it was cool, but this is better. So yeah, that's it. That's us doing up the studio. I wanna say before we get out of here, thank you to all of the guys from Hue for getting this idea off the ground. I think it's a really good way to showcase exactly what you can do with their lighting. Obviously a massive shout out to Acoustic Solutions for putting this all together for us as well, because let's be honest, I can change a light bulb, but I can't, I can visualize, but I don't think I can pretty much get this going without their help. Uh, also massive shout out to Elgato for the studio kit now. I feel like we've got a space that we can have well lit. Uh, a space that we can control the lighting with and a space that we can do a really nice controlled streaming as well and yeah thanks you guys for listening if you have any questions about any of the products in here let us know in the comments and we'll try our best to answer them also don't forget to hit like and subscribe i'm marcus bronzy and i'll see you soon bless